Hey y'all, it's Steffi and welcome back to my channel. A common question that I get during my coaching sessions is about how I pass the CPA exam. I had actually filmed this video several years ago. It was when I was first coming back onto YouTube after taking a little bit of a break. The video quality is, you know, you know how it was back in the day. So hopefully by doing this video, it'll be helpful for y'all who are in the process of passing your CPA exam or who plan on taking the CPA exam in the future. So I'm gonna be giving you guys five of my best tips that I think helped me the most to be able to pass a CPA exam within four months when I was working full time at the big four. These are for busy working professionals, okay? It's not for people who want to necessarily get like really high ranking scores. If you wanna get like an award for being in the super high percentile of people with their scores and stuff like that, you know, this video is not for you. <laughs> this is for you're short on time and you just need something efficient to get you through the exam, you know, this is the video for you. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Maybe you're still in college and you wanna plan for it. So I'll have some videos linked about like classes that I took that I think would be very helpful if you're in college and you wanna take some electives to help you, you know, prep for the CPA exam. So very briefly in my background, I graduated college um, in 2010 with a bachelor's degree in accounting. I did not get a master's degree. I just got 150 credit hours, which is the requirement here in Texas. A certain amount of that 150 hours are made up of certain business classes, ethics, communications, and certain accounting classes. Um, I chose to go that route because it was cheaper for me just to do an undergrad class versus going full on master's degree. And then also um, I had a full time offer from the big four firm that I had interned with when I was in college. So I, you know, I just wanted to get done with school as efficiently as possible and as economically as possible so I could start working and making my own money. So I used Becker. Um, I had the Becker software as well as the textbooks like the you know physical textbooks and the flashcards. Big four firm that I worked for provided it to us. I failed taking the CPA exam three times before I got really serious about it. Uh, partially because I didn't get through all the material and then also I just you know wasn't in the right mindset to be able to really conquer my goal. So whenever I actually decided to take the CPA exam seriously, I chose to do it over a summer when I was working full time. So I took audit on May 31st, reg on July 15th, BEC on July 30th, and then FAR on August 31st. Prior to passing this, I had failed FAR twice and BEC once. You know, that segues into my very first tip, which I think is one of the most important tips, which is to find your why. When I had attempted the CPA exam prior to it, you know, I wanted to just become a CPA. You know, that's usually all of our goals. Didn't light the fire within me and make me, you know, really pursue it with everything that I had. Until you find that fire, I honestly kind of feel it's a waste of money if you don't pass, a waste of your time if you're not really studying seriously and you're studying, but you know, you're kind of goofing off, you're not really taking it seriously. It's, it's really a waste of time. So I recommend you guys to not start your CPA exam journey until you are like 100% invested in completing it. Of course, you don't have to do it within the aggressive timeline like I did. I had it for specific reasons. I would say find your why, find the purpose behind you know, wanting to get it done. For me, I had gone through a really bad busy season. Seven to eight months, I was working 70 hours a week. I could feel I was getting burned out. Getting the big four experience doesn't put me in the best position unless I have my CPA license as well. So that's when I really got the fire to be serious about taking the CPA exam. Also on top of that, the big four at the time, I think they still do it now, but at the time there was a bonus for if you pass a CPA exam within one to two years. I was coming up to my two year anniversary. So I was like, I really want that bonus. We were at the time building our first house and you know, all, so all of those things were kind of like, big motivating factors for me. I wanna be a CPA. I've been told that it's gonna help my career, you know, by my professors and stuff. They always said, get your CPA license and you know, it opens doors. I want y'all to know now, you know, I've been working in the accounting profession for 10 years and I honestly do feel that's the case. So, you know, even if you're, if you don't wanna to listen to your professors, you know, hopefully you'll take my friendly sisterly advice and know that having a CPA license really does make you more marketable. It opens up certain 
job positions, high paying job positions do ask for a CPA license or prefer a CPA. Just so you know, it's real y'all, it is real. To sit down and really figure out like, why do I wanna do this? Just because you wanna be a CPA, that, that isn't just it. Think about not only having that CPA after your name, like what does that do for your life? Does that increase your job opportunities? Does that allow you to be more flexible in terms of not being stuck in one job and being able to provide for yourself and for your family? Like think more broadly other than just being a CPA. My second tip is to start with the section that is the easiest. Now, I'm not saying that the CPA exam or any specific sections are easy, some are easier than others, um, in my opinion. When I first started taking the CPA exam, I decided to take FAR first. When I did that, I failed both times that I tried to take FAR. I think part of it too is just the test-taking learning curve. The first time you take the exam, I feel like is also it's already a little bit difficult because you're not used to how the exam is administered. If I could go back, I would have started with audit, which is what I did you know, during that period when I actually passed. The way I structured taking the CPA exam, I took audit first, then I took reg, then I took BEC, and then I took FAR. And the reason for that is more confident in audit because I had you know, been doing external audits, substantive, and controls, so I felt like I had a pretty good handle on the topics there. And I think I only studied about two weeks for audit. Then I took reg. For reg, I gave myself the longest window for me to study. So I had all of June and then half of July to study for reg. I did that because I, that was the one I was the most worried about because I didn't take a corporate tax class when I was in college. I'd only taken an individual tax. So I just felt like my knowledge with tax related things was weaker than all the other sections. So I gave that one more time for me to study. Then I took BEC because the easier of between BEC and FAR. And so I gave myself two weeks to study for BEC, gave myself one month to study for FAR since I had taken FAR twice before. So I had gotten through a lot of the material, but just not all of it. But also there's just so much to learn uh, and to remember for FAR. If I had not taken it twice before and had gotten through you know, some material already, that one I probably would have given myself a longer amount of time to study for. I knew that if I failed anything within that window, I had at least, you know, one month in the second window to try again before I missed out on my CPA exam bonus. Depending on your circumstance that you're in right now, you know, you'll have to schedule your exams accordingly to meet those goals. Right. So my third tip for you guys is to make a very detailed plan on how you are going to study. I actually have a blog post that's from my previous video as well. I have a couple blog posts that I'll link in the description box for you guys. So you can see pictures of my little calendars and how I planned it out. So for example, for reg, I had a month and a half to study, divided it based on how, the number of pages in my textbook and so that I knew how many pages I need to get through each week and then I I divided it down by day. So let's say there was 240 pages in the textbook. I had six weeks to study, so that means I needed to get through at least 40 pages. So then I split it up between the seven days that I had. And then also including homework problems, simulations, studying a little bit every single day during the week, like during my work week, I gave myself like an hour or two to study. I'd get up early and study at home or I'd get ready, go to the office and study for like an hour or two or during lunch or something. But I wanted to consume, you know, the material frequently. Um, I didn't want to like do it on a weekend and then have five days go by and then go do another weekend. Wanted to keep building on the knowledge that I was studying and I wanted to retain things. So I gave myself little chunks to do during the work week and then I had larger chunks to do on the weekends. As I was working 40 hours during the summer, thank God, I wasn't on another like busy, busy season client or a client with a deadline. So I was working 40 hours at work and then on top of that, I was doing an additional 26 to 30 hours of study time. So for me, I just kept my mindset and told myself I was still in busy season since I had had a very long busy season prior to that. For example, during the work week, the first day I did chapter two, read topic one. The next day, chapter two again, homework for 
topic one. The next day, read chapter and then do the homework for it because certain chapters had more, you know, and some had less. Also, when you're scheduling, build in time for a final review. So to be able to get through all the material you need to and then also have, you know, two, three days if possible to be able to review everything prior to the exam. Also, I think it's really important to look and see if you can build in relaxed days. For me, it just didn't work out to have it super often. Um, it would be, you know, every couple of weeks or so where I would have one day on the weekend, like on a Sunday where I didn't study and I didn't work and I just gave myself time to relax. Um, I think that's really important. I personally liked that I had what material I needed to get through. For some reason, got through one thing faster than expected. Feel good about, oh, okay, so I can take the rest of the day off or I can study stuff that, you know, is coming up. And so I know at some point in time, I'm gonna have a little bit of like downtime. It takes a little bit of planning beforehand, but you know what they say, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Putting together a detailed plan that makes sense for you, that's doable. So my fourth tip is going into the actual studying for the CPA exam. So I personally cut out listening to the lectures. Honestly, I felt like the lectures just took up too much dang time and I didn't learn anything additional, in my opinion, from the lectures than what I could learn from just reading the textbook, honestly. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it was just more efficient. What I did like to do though, is go into the textbook that was on the software itself because the lectures, what I thought was helpful was they would give you mnemonics, certain words that would help you remember concepts of what they were teaching you. The textbook on the software would already have it in there. So I would actually just go through it and copy it down into my hard copy um, textbook. There was something highlighted or underlined or something emphasized within softwares um, textbook, I would do the same thing in my hard copy. For me, and also the type of learner that I am, helps me solidify the information in my brain. Having the textbooks marked up already and then me reading through the pages. Also, I would take very detailed notes as well and that's just how I personally learn. I'm That's the type of learner that I am. If there's a concept that I'm struggling with, then I'll go and listen to the lectures. I only think I needed to do that in reg for certain things, but everything else, I literally just read my textbook. Then I would do the homework problems and then the simulations. I'll link for you guys in the description box some tips that I have for studying be able to study well and to retain knowledge and to understand concepts. My final review was reading through my notes, going over the mnemonics again, doing all the homework again, doing simulations again, and then going through my flashcards. I would cut myself off from studying the night before the exam. Relax your mind, let the information marinate for, you know, overnight. <laughs> my last tip is to do a brain dump. When I went in and took my exam, it's timed obviously, so you don't have a lot of time. But the first like minute or two of me sitting down, I would do a brain dump. Back in the day, I don't know if they do this still now, but back in the day, they used to give us a piece of paper and like a pen or pencil. And so I would just literally sit there for a minute or two and write down every single thing I could think of in my head about that exam. So mnemonics, I would just write them down real fast. If there's something that had a lot of like equations or formulas, cost of goods sold or direct materials or, you know, things of that nature, EPS, you don't want to take the whole time writing out everything that you know. But I, I personally felt like, okay, let me get it all on paper. So it's kind of like a cheat sheet, but it's not because you're not bringing that with you already pre-done. It's your brain and you're writing it down. So I feel like that's not a cheat sheet, it's just a brain dump. When I'm going through my stuff, like going through the different questions, nervous that I forgot something because I would look down and I'd see, oh, okay, yeah, I remember this mnemonic. Those are the five like best practices that I feel really helped me to pass a CPA exam. Before closing this video though, I did wanna share something that I think really helped me when I was trying to pass. One of the seniors that I had worked for briefly, but he made such a huge impact on me. He had been having a hard time passing the CPA exam as well. And until someone said this to him, it, you know, it was life-changing for him. So I hope that it helps you guys because it was life-changing for me. That is to give yourself the chance to pass. You have every ability to pass the CPA exam. Look at how far you've already come so far. You went to high school, you went to college. You know, you've passed certain exams already in school and the CPA exam is kind of taking all of that and just, you know, making it 10 times harder <laughs> because you're trying to 
remember so much material. More often than not, being able to achieve those goals came from you planning and being dedicated and you know doing all the things that I've shared today in this video. So you have it within yourself, you just have to give yourself the chance to pass. So for me, like not studying for BEC the first time, of course I'm not gonna pass, you know? I'm gonna fail because I didn't give myself the chance to pass. Same thing with when I took FAR twice, you know, I never got through all of the material, so I wasn't going in super prepared and ready. And even for those of you guys who do all the studying, you go in and you get like a 74 or you get a 70, whatever it is, just know like you're getting closer and closer and closer to your goal. You just need a little bit more and just a little bit more, but at least as long as you are continuing down that path, being tenacious and having grit and determination and being dedicated to the process because it's not easy. It's definitely very rewarding once you do finish it. And just know once you're done with the CPA exam, you don't have to study like that no more, okay? <laughs> Unless you want another license. Once you're done with that, Think of all the free time you'll have, like just get it over with and that's something that you will have for the remainder of your career as long as you keep your license current. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. I hope y'all are staying safe, stay healthy and stay positive and I'll talk to y'all in my next video. <clears throat> mimo, mimo, moo. Okay, here we go. Okay. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It, you know, and yeah, so I, you know, so, um, so, um, so, so, um, August, July, June, May, um, so, so um, just, you know, it's, and I'm going to look at my pictures because I, I just don't remember off the top of my head. Let me see, do I have it in my downloads? No, like some chicken. Count receivable turnover, or whatever the f These are tips for people who just need to get it done. You got things to do. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.